So this is how my belly looks like and that's before I even had lunch. It's just really bloated all the way from the top to the bottom. You can hear that. It's just really hard inside. Solid hard. Nothing I can do about it right now. Just looks pregnant. Hey guys, so I didn't plan to record this video today. I'm supposed to do an update in a month's time, not right now. Yeah, so I started my gut protocol, my SIBO gut protocol like two weeks ago. I just don't have any energy like ever since, ever since I started the protocol, I just feel so flat. Um, I was supposed to record a different video today to publish on Thursday, which is when I'm probably gonna publish this video. But I just don't have any energy right now. Like, I feel so, like, I won't say I'm depressed. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just, I don't feel great because I have no energy. And I know it seems like I'm so happy. I'm so energetic in my previous video, like in my this week's video or last week's video. But. I'm running really low on energy, especially this week. Like I am completely out. Like last week's video, it took me ages to record it. It took me three hours. I was just sitting there zoning out. I couldn't actually form a sentence. I actually couldn't articulate myself very well in that video as well. Like I just don't have that energy to even speak at that point. I'm, I'm just extremely fatigued and just exhausted and just I just can't even focus like I can't concentrate on anything like my eyes I can't even focus like it's just so hard right now so basically obviously my bacterial overgrowth in my small intestine is actually worse than I thought um I think when I tested it I just finished my parasite protocol so my gut looked a little bit better as well uh, because it killed off some yeast and some bacteria while it's on it um, because of the herbs and whatnot and now i think i don't know i, I think it got a lot worse towards the end of the year and now that i'm on this gut protocol i get a lot of die off symptoms so it's like a healing crisis or Herzheimer's reaction that's what you guys call it scientifically i'm basically feeling so weak to the point that i can't even walk i feel like my legs don't belong to me <laughs> i'm walking but i just don't feel like my legs belong to me it, they just feel so weak like I can't get off the bed in the morning. I don't think I'm that depressed anymore because I've been seeing a doctor for a while now and I feel a lot better. But being in this state that you feel so helpless or just like useless. I don't think I should use that word useless, but it's just like I can't do anything. I can't work out. I can't even do body weight workouts, guys. I feel like I'm wasting away. I just look at my arms. Like... I feel like they're gone. Well, where's all my muscles? They're gone. I haven't even weighed myself and I don't even want to weigh myself anymore because it's either I gain a lot of weight or I lose a lot of weight. Like, I don't give a shit right now. Like, I just want to feel better. I just want all this bacteria, the bad bacteria or whatever it is to go away and repopulate my gut with healthy bacteria and basically feel good again. I know like a lot of people don't know what SIBO is like it's not like a popular disease out there um, and not everyone has heard of it because it's not a common disease like I just say I think I don't know my, my brain is fried um, maybe I should tell you guys a little bit about how I got it um, so SIBO like most people get it from either antibiotic use or being in a very stressed out environment or like there's tons of reasons how you can get it. For me, um, I just asked my mom this week. Uh, I, I just felt like something was wrong when I was a baby or a toddler. Because I remember my mom telling me that I used to have UTI a lot, like urinary tract infection, even as a kid. Um, so I think my first infection was about one year or two years old. So my mom brought me to a doctor and the doctor decided to give me antibiotics because... 
obviously I had like bacteria in my urinary tract and apparently my mom used to have a lot of UTI as well and my mom wasn't in great health when she had me as well so I guess like everything kind of makes sense so ever since I was a kid like after two years old and whatnot I was frequently on antibiotics I think that's what people used to do like they just give antibiotics every time you have a cold you have a sore throat you have a flu you have a fever like the doctors just prescribe you like antibiotics so I used to have those like a couple of times a year every time when I get sick you know how kids get sick very easily because um, kids immune system aren't that strong yet so I was on antibiotics pretty much every year a couple of times a year and I guess that kind of destroyed my gut because when I was in like elementary school, I used to have to go to the doctor so frequently. I had to see my doctor to get my stomach checked because I always have massive cramps and just really bloated stomach. Like this is not a problem since like the last two years. Like I used to have really, really bloated stomach and bloated gas, like just full of gas. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it sounds like someone is playing a drum. Anyway, like I used to have that ever since I was in elementary school, like up to my up to middle school, I always had to go to the doctor every couple of weeks or every two weeks or every week to to know like to find out what the heck is wrong with my stomach and my gut. And I guess I had SIBO since I was a kid, but nobody knew that what that was, right? Like nobody gave a shit about that. So that pretty much went on until like middle school and I think I started to feel a little bit better. I still have a lot of like cramps and diarrhea and constipation and whatnot, like just crazy stomach issue. I used to not be able to poop like for one week and then the next week I'll be having diarrhea like for a couple of days. And sometimes I can't even poop out my poop and I had to ask my mom to help me, like to just help me out. And sometimes I had to put things into my anus to like poop poop like it's just crazy the amount of shit i have to go through is shit i think i'm getting very emotional because of how i'm feeling right now like i feel useless like it's really depressing that i can't do anything i can't do any body weight workouts obviously because i can't even walk like can you imagine i just can't like i just can't do it and it pisses me off that I can't do it. Oh my god, why am I tearing up? Shut the... I don't know why I'm recording this video right now. I'm not gonna edit this fancily like this. I'm just gonna like clip everything together. I think the last part I left off was that I was always feeling really crappy. I used to have UTI since I was a kid until like elementary school. And then um, it cleared up a little. I remember my mom used to have to bring me to the doctor very frequently to get some medicine and also apply ointments on my bottom. And it always burns like crazy. I guess thanks to all the doctors in the past, they prescribed me so much antibiotics to the point that it totally destroyed my gut. And I still get UTI once in a while these days. Like I haven't got it for a long time until like the last couple of years. I started getting UTI again. And when I did a test, which was in part one of my health update video, you could see there's a lot of E. coli. And there's always E. coli in my bladder as well, which is why I freaking get UTI. And then I have to be on antibiotics and it's just like a vicious cycle, like destroying my gut again. Anyways, on top of that, I decided to go on Rakuten, which totally destroyed my liver. Four courses of Rakuten, some of them went on for a year because I was so desperate to clear my acne. I used to have really bad acne and the doctor tested my hormones back in days and it was like really imbalanced. I was probably around 19 years old when I got my hormones tested. He told me that my hormones were out of whack, which is why I was getting so much acne. And he said like maybe getting pregnant is an option. I'm like, what the heck? I was 19 years old. I'm not gonna get pregnant just because I want to clear my acne. So Rakuten it is. So I took so much Rakuten to the point that it kind of destroyed my liver, which is why I have such orange palm, yellow palms. I used to have pink palms. My mom used to say that like, oh my God, you look exactly like a dad, dad's hands, because I have like really short and stubby fingers and also my fingers and my palms used to be so pink. But anyway, and then after that, after Rakuten, I went on about four courses of antibiotics and each course was at around 6 to 12 months. 
um, to clear my acne because it just it wasn't going away because it was hormonal like I wish I knew what to do about it so it's like my health has always been shit I don't know I'm crying I just hate being like this I know I don't have a heart disease I don't have diabetes I don't have a, a chronic like a deadly disease but I just I'm just so sick of feeling sick I think this freaking die off is making me very depressed right now. I know it will get better. I feel like everything that I've talked about in today's video is so disjointed. Like nothing really connects. Because I can't focus like I say. But I'm just telling you guys exactly how I'm feeling. Like this protocol. Like I spoke to my doctor today. Um. I'm very positive that I will feel better, but I just can't. I can't change how I'm feeling right now as well. And I really, I'm just so angry at myself sometimes. I still have two more weeks with this gut protocol, my SIBO protocol. But if it doesn't clear up, I have to go on three months protocol to clear it up. I really don't know if I I have to go through that. Maybe I have to. It really depends on how I feel on week four, because. I don't have to eat anything to be bloated at this point. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just going to give you guys a little update about what happened in the last two weeks because so much happened to my body. And if I don't update now, and I, I don't think I'll remember it on day 30, I won't remember how I'm feeling right now. And I just want to be real with you guys that these things are not easy to do because when I got onto this gut protocol, I didn't know that it would be that difficult. And I'm so glad that I did it after I came back from Sydney for the Gymshark event. I was going to start right then. And I guess I was really, really fatigued from the Gymshark event because I was there at the event three days, the whole day, mostly standing around and talking to a lot of people and a lot of you guys, which I really, really love. I, I really, really love talking to every single one of you who decided to come and see me. But at the end of it, I was so exhausted. Like... I, I know I came back on Monday, I felt like I was completely out, but yeah, I think that's when I started my gut protocol the next day, and I just really wanted to get into it because I want to feel better, like I've been waiting to do this for a while now, like it was so delayed, I wanted to start it in December, but anyway, I started it in mid-January, two weeks ago, was it mid-January, late January, See, my brain is fried. Um, yeah, so day one and two was kind of okay. Like, I didn't feel any side effects. Like, there's no die-off symptom. I just felt like normal. I still had pretty, like, I still had good energy. But not enough to the point that I couldn't do, like, I couldn't do a workout at that point as well. Like, I was feeling a little bit weaker. Like, I couldn't really do workouts anymore. I could go for a walk then. But I couldn't do like lifting or my flat belly challenge. And at that, at that point, I was like, okay, maybe it's just for the first couple of days. I'll feel better. Day three, that's when I started like major fatigue and bloating. And that went on for like the next four days like, until day seven. I just felt so horrible. Like it got worse and worse. I didn't have to eat anything to be so like bloated at that point like I'll wake up with a very bloated stomach it got better on day 8 and 9 like day 7 was really really bad I felt so sick I couldn't eat anything so I was drinking some shake and I ate some like hemp seeds and whatnot just to get in like lots of calories I just want to feed myself with some calories and also some vitamins so I had a lot of those on day 8 I felt a little bit better I guess I was used to the dose because I had to increase my dose like every week and day eight and nine i felt good and day nine i remember i went to the gym and tried to do a bit of workouts tried to do my flat belly challenge i did a little bit and then i started feeling really really weak and on day nine i was like okay something is weird like why am i feeling weak again and so i decided you know what i'm gonna just not do anything i was really angry <laughs> Anyway, day 9 went past, day 10 I think I was really frustrated so I went to buy a lot of beef bone and I specifically checked that it was grass-fed beef and grass-finished beef. 
so they will not fed any grains because I don't want any GMO stuff in my body right now. I just want to eat clean. So I made myself like a couple of liters of bone broth. I'm still drinking it right now. So I have it after at every meal every day just to heal my gut a little and feel better because every time when I eat stuff, I feel so bloated. So I like to have some like liquid calories as well just to get as much nutrients as possible. And the problem is I do feel hungry. I was so hungry, but every time when I eat, I get so much cramps and bloating. I just got frustrated because I wasn't feeling any better. And anyway, from day 10 to day 13, that's when I started feeling really bad again. I drank a lot of bone broth, just felt really crap from day 10, 11, 12. Those three days were miserable. My legs definitely didn't belong to me at that point. I tried to walk, like I tried to walk after every meal just to help to digest better. I was even having digestive enzyme before my meals so that I could digest my food better. I was having lots of vitamins. I was taking like 11 pills a day and something else in the morning and night as well. So I was taking so much things and my body, I guess, couldn't even absorb a lot of these. Ugh, I'm so frustrated. Anyway, so I felt the worst on day 12 when I had some lentils because I was trying to have more protein from, from veggie sauce instead of from meat or from, from fishes. And oh my god, guys, after I had lentils, I pretty much bloat up like crazy. I had major stomach cramps. I always have a bit of stomach cramp after I eat, um, but after I had lentils, it was so bad. I was so bloated. I was in so much pain to the point that I couldn't even eat dinner. Obviously, I had to eat something because I had to take my medication. So I had to like eat a little bit of things to eat my medication with it. So anyway, so on day 14, I decided to eat the things that I'm not sensitive to, that I think that I won't have any reaction to. So I basically just have like sweet potato with one more veg, like zucchini, which is like a safe vegetable for me. And I have ham hearts. And for dinner, I had some salmon, some sweet potato, and Swiss chard or something. I can't remember now. <laughs> My brain is fried. But anyway, so I felt really good on day 14. Like I didn't have, I had bloating, but I didn't have cramps at that point, which is really, really good. And now on day 15, I'm feeling a little bit better today, but I'm just overly emotional because of the last two weeks, I felt like I went through a lot with my body because I, feel, I felt like I couldn't do anything. I just felt like I want to sleep in bed all day. I couldn't get up in the morning. And every time when I get up in the morning, I just don't even have the energy. My legs were so weak. I feel like everything is all over the place today. Like my video is all over the place. I'm so sorry about that. And I'm not going to edit much of this. I'm just trying to like explain how I'm feeling right now. Oof. So anyway, some people just have a lot of die off symptom more than the other. Like... Everyone's quite different when it comes to going on protocols like this, depending on how full your rain barrel is. I'm not that young anymore. I'm not sure whether you guys know my age, but I don't really want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, but basically as you age, you know, you get more, uh, your rain barrel keep filling up unless you empty it. And I know that mine has been filled up for a while now. <laughs> because I've already had all these symptoms as a kid, you know. I had to miss a lot of like classes or school back in the days because of my stomach issues. And a lot of people suggest me to take like probiotics and all of that, but if you, ha if you have SIBO, that's the worst thing to do. And small intestine, like I haven't really talked much about SIBO. So small intestine is supposed to be quite sterile. You're not supposed to have much bacteria in there. And most of your bacteria are supposed to be in your large intestine, which is in your colon. So what I normally have is that when I eat, I have quite a bit of indigestion. Like normally straight away, I feel like I feel quite bloated and that I feel a bit of cramps on my upper stomach. And after an hour or so, I normally feel very, very bloated. And that's because when your food is trying to pass through into your intestine, like mine gets stuck in there and get fermented in there because of all the bacteria, which is why it takes me a long time to digest my food and also, you know, like to poop it out. It takes me days. 
which is not normal guys it's not supposed to take this long and i know a lot of people always say like uh oh, chloe not a lot of people like some people in the comment section on my ab videos like saying things like you know you don't even have abs you don't even have upper body uh, upper abs like why are you telling people how to do ab exercises that's because i have SIBO <laughs> if you tap my tummy my upper stomach or any part of my stomach you will hear gas and that's 24 7 it never goes away and i'm surprised that i still have a little bit of ab definition because i'm forever bloated i can relieve the symptom a little i can make it a little bit better i can eat the foods that don't make me bloat so much but it's always always there guys i have this since i was a kid <laughs> and i'm just feeling really bad now because i'm getting older and i've been through a lot of stress in the last couple of years financially, family, which obviously aggravates like, all of these symptoms. Like stress is the number one cause of inflammation to any other diseases as well. So I guess mine it really affected my gut because that was already my weak spot to begin with. So yeah, I've tested it. My gut is not exactly super healthy. My liver is not super healthy as well. So I'm in the middle of fixing it. I feel like I'm repeating myself. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But yeah, SIBO. I was talking about SIBO. So yeah, my food always gets stuck in my small intestine and then it gets fermented in there. The bacteria is just feeding on it. And that's why I have a lot of gas problems. And also your small intestine are not meant to be able to stretch. They're not made to be able to stretch, which is why I get so much cramps after I eat um, because it's just a little tube. So small intestine is just a really small tube. It's not big and it's not stretchy. So when the bacteria in there producing so much gas in there, it causes a lot of like stomach like cramps and all of that. Because most of the bacteria are supposed to be in your large intestine. So yeah, I guess that's the update for today. It is I know it is not exactly the video that I like to put out there, but this is it. Like this is how I feel right now. I can't wait to heal from C Boy. I know I know some people think that this is like not a big deal and whatnot, but it has affected me for the last 30 years. Wow. I guess that's how I'm going to end this video today. I hope you guys have a great day. I know I will feel better soon. I'm very positive about it. I know I look a little bit sad today. I, I, I was tearing up because... I guess I just don't feel well and I want to feel well, but I'll get there. Yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.